no uh, for today's meeting tatapusin lang po natin yung remaining topics natin for the midterm okay and yun nga hopefully matapos po natin para po by next week at least posting na lang po tayo ng exam since uh, supposed to be po ang midterm natin di ba last week pa tama ba La ano yun eh tapos na ba kayo ng exam sa ibang subject nyo sa ibang klase nyo are you done already not yet Wala pa. wala pa po, ma. Wala pa. <laughs> Akala ko naman, sabi ko. Ano pa naman ako? Gusto ko naka, ano sana, sumusunod sa isa sa, ano, sa schedule. Kaya lang yun nga. Uh, hindi tayo, may mga, na, ano, may mga, hindi tayo nakasunod dun sa schedule natin. But anyway, wala pa naman pala eh. Kala ko, huling huli na ako. So, anyway, yun nga po. Hopefully matapos para by next week ay posting lang po ng midterm. And then for the final term naman, ang remaining topics na lang po natin ay um, siguro after the midterm or kasabay siguro ng exam, titignan ko posting na ako ng ilang presentations and lectures naman para po sa final term natin. So that includes uh, Aristotle's concept of eudaimonia, yun na lang uh, natitira, plus uh, GMO, genetically modified organism, uh, global climate change, ano po ba yun? Um, biodiversity, tapos nanotech, and uh, global pandemic. Yun po yung mga natitirang topic. Though yung global pandemic, wala po yun dun sa syllabus, if you can still recall when I discuss about the content of the syllabus for SPS, uh, wala po yun, pero included po yun dun sa ating, ano, dun sa ating uh, uh, module, sa ating manual. So, uh, since included naman, and since, ano, uh, isasama na po natin yung sa discussion natin for the final. Okay? So, sige. Let's uh, proceed na. So, again po, no, yung topic po natin is about the cradles of early science. Yun po yung uh, next topic natin. And we've already discussed about uh, the about um, science and technology in Mesoamerica. Remember the four Mesoamerican civilizations that we've discussed, from Olmec to uh, Mayan to Inca and Aztec. And then we've also discussed at least some, kung hindi man po lahat, ano, kasi may madami din po yun, but uh, we've discussed already some of the significant individuals about on um, the Islamic Golden Age, the of Islamic Golden Age, uh, who are these Arab scientists and scholars, and what are their uh, contributions in different uh, fields of science and in, in technology. So, right now, so we'll be discussing about the development of science in Asia, specifically in India and China. So, Asia is the biggest continent in the world and the home of many ancient civilizations. Civilizations, and it is the host um, to many cultural, economic, scientific, and political activities of all ages. In the field of science, technology, mathematics, great civilizations have stood out. And kasama na nga po dyan yung diniscuss natin Middle East civilizations as well as yung diniscuss po natin ngayon na India and China. So these civilizations, India, China, and Middle East were incomparable in terms of their contributions to the development of knowledge during the time. So, um, India, muna po tayo. India is a huge peninsula surrounded by vast bodies of water and fortified, fortified by huge uh, mountains in its northern borders. Uh, developed, they were able to develop. as this Indus Valley Civilization na tinatawag or also known as the Harappan Civilization or also known as the Bronze Age Civilization in the northwestern regions of South uh, Asia. 
And yeah, so the Indus Valley Civilization, or again, the Bronze Age Civilization, which lasted 3,300 to 1,300 BCP, um, they were able to develop new techniques in handicraft and metallurgy. Kaya po yung mga sumunod na slide dyan is it's all about metallurgical works of the ancient Indians. Uh, by the way, metallurgy is the art and the science of extracting metals from uh, their ores and modifying them for use. So, um, the Indus Valley Civilization, these uh, people were, were also noted for their urban planning, big brick houses, elaborated drainage systems, and clusters of large non-residential buildings. Ayan. So, the ancient India is known for manufacturing iron and some meta metallurgical works. So, like for instance, they use brass, they use copper, like dito naka-indicate copper. Uh, they used to create copper bronze images, such as Buddhas or Hindu or Mahayana Buddhist deities or gods. They also use gold and silver to make uh, utensils for the nobility. They also use iron. Ayan. Um, their iron steel is considered to be the best and held with high regard in the whole Roman Empire. Um, tapos ito, yung wood steel. A pioneering steel alloy, matrix, was first developed though for in India. Uh, this steel was used to make yung famous na Damascus steel or Damascus swords of yore, na sobrang talim. Yun yun. So, um, which uh, sinasabi sa sobrang talim niya, it could cleave a free falling silk scarf or a block of wood with the same piece. So, yun yun siya kasalim. Tapos, in the field of medicine naman, um, ancient India is also known for their Ayurvedic medicine, Ayurveda. Um, although, ah, meron ba yun dito? Ayan. Yeah. So, bago po yun, you know, meron din sila tinatawag na Bauer Manuscript. The Bauer Manuscript, an early birch bark document dated to Gupta era. Uh, basically, this manuscript includes the oldest dated uh, fragments of Indian medical text known as the Nabanitaka. Yun po yung naka- uh, dinagdag ko na lang po yan dyan. Yung sa, sa PowerPoint presentation na ano, uh, ang tawag dyan, uh, pinost po, hindi ko pa na-edit yun. So, eto po, edited na, nilagyan ko na yan. Again, in our manuscript includes the oldest dated fragments of Indian medical text known as the Nabanitaka, which is a collection daw po of seven fragmentary Sanskrit treaties found or found buried in a Buddhist memorial. Tapos, ito yung ginabanggit ko, no? Ancient India is known for, this, for their Ayurveda, your Ayurvedic medicine, the science of living or knowledge of life and longevity. Um, Ayurveda is a traditional holistic medical system in India. Um, they were able to discover some medicinal properties of plants which led them to develop medicines to cure some illnesses or diseases. Um, some ancient texts like the Shushruta Samhita describes different surgical and, and medical procedures famous in ancient India. Remember that when we say Ayurvedic medicine, Ayurveda views that we people, we individuals, incur illnesses or diseases when we live out of harmony with the environment. And para gumaling ka to treat all these diseases or, or uh, your medical condition, uh, individuals must restore their natural mental and physical balance by re-establishing harmony between themselves and the environment or the world around them. So at that point, kapag nagawa na daw yun, mayroon ng harmony between the two, they can begin uh, to heal naturally. And so the great theology of Ayurvedic medicine includes yung binagip na kanina, yung Shushruta Samhita, which, which is an ancient Sanskrit text on medicine and surgery, such as plastic surgery and the removal of cataracts. It also includes Charaka Samhita, which describes the ancient theories in human body, etiology, and therapeutics for a wide range of diseases. And Astanga Vidaya, the heart of eight views, which contains about 7,120 poetic verses about surgical instruments. And so, ito naman, these are just some examples of surgery, you know, na ginagawa po during their time. From, so, nung panahon pala na yun, ano, meron ng rhinoplasty. 
Alam niyo naman na yan, rhinoplasty and detotomy or yung surgical removal of uh, stones and different organs of our body. Tapos, in the field of astronomy naman, yan. so uh, ancient Indians were able to develop some theories about the configuration of the universe. Like in Hindu cosmology, they, they believe that the universe is cyclically created and destroyed. Um, they also uh, they also develop theories about the historical self-supporting Earth. Ayan, so they believe about the as uh, uh, spherical Earth and the motion of the planets. Aitareya Brahmana was an ancient Indian philosophical text that states that. Um, the Earth's rotation may be the cause of the sun rising and setting. Okay, tapos sino po ito si Arya Bata? Uh, one of the noted you know, and well-known um, um, Indian astronomer and mathematician was Arya Bata. Arya Bata believed in the spherical Earth, yung binanggit ko kanina, and he was the author of uh, he was the author of the Aryabhatiya, a Sanskrit astronomical treatise, not only astronomical but mathematical treatise din siya. Okay? Um, ayan, so ito yung content. Dito na isa-isahin po yan, ano? Tapos, um, the ancient Indians also used this armillary sphere. In the field of astronomy, gumamit din po sila, sila nitong uh, armillary sphere na tinatawag. Although, um, hindi po sila yung nag-invento nito kasi um, if you will search more about this, ano, the celestial spheres ang, uh, ano po, Greek yata ang unang gumamit po unit o nag-invento niya. But anyway, uh, this armillary sphere was also used by the ancient Indian. These celestial spheres with a model of the earth and later on sun nga is placed at the center. Uh, this armillary sphere um, was used um, by the ancient Indians consisting of these several rings na nakikita natin dito sa picture. These several rings represent the celestial bodies or the heavenly bodies, you know, the celestial bodies or uh, in the heavens. Of course, um, Rig Veda. Rig Veda is um, the earliest and one of the most important texts of the Hindu tradition. Ayan, yung ibig sabihin daw po niyan, Rig uh, means praise and Veda means knowledge. So, uh, the knowledge of verses, um, the oldest of the sacred books of Hinduism. Then, another is uh, Siddhanta Shiromani, a major treatise naman of Indian astronomer and mathematician Bastara II. Uh, Siddhanta Shiromani is... Um, Siya, more of astronomical te, ano, treatise than siya, written and authored by Bhaskara II. It contains several topics about measurement of the mean, la, uh, mean longitudes of the planets. It also tackles about the urinal motion. It also tackles about lunar eclipses, latitudes of the planets, etc. So basically, it's about astronom astronomy, astronomical treatise siya. Yan. Tapos, in the field of mathematics naman, uh, Mohenjo Daro, Daho, ruler. Okay? Uh, rulers made out of ivory, um, divided into units corresponding to 1.32 inches. Um, the ancient Indians tried to standardize measurement, or they tried to standardize their measurement of length. Uh, by using this, you know, this ruler, this uh, Mohenjo Daho ruler. Tapos, yung binanggit ko na po kanina, na Arya Batia, ano, in, in, uh, in the field of astronomy, and then naulit po, nagdito rin in, in mathematics, because as I said earlier, um, Arya Batia is not just an astronomical text, but also a mathematical thesis. So again, written and authored by Aryabhata. So Aryabhatiya also includes uh, or introduced a number of trigonometric functions, tables, techniques, and algorithms of algebra. Um, ancient Indians also introduced the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, which is the most common system for the symbolic representation of numbers in the world. And they also introduced the binary number, sy binary number system. And so... 
Tapos dito, I also, aside from, aside from um, Mascara the Second, aside from uh, Aryabhata, another um, significant individual during the ancient India, itong, ano, well, mathematician, you know, ito po si Madhaba of, Sa- Mad- Madhaba of Sangha Magrama. He was an Indian mathematician who pioneered in formulating uh, infinite theories, approximations in trigonometric functions. His contributions in algebra, you know, yung polynomial expansion methods and infinite fractions, sa kanya din po yan credited. Actually, he was also considered as the founder of mathematical analysis. Ayan, ayan. So, Tapos, in the field of nuclear weapons and space agency, uh, tandaan na lang po natin to, si Aryong, uh, again, Aryabata ulit. Ano, kasi po, um, ito yung, ano, ito yung una, ayan, India's first satellite and launch. Although, I don't know if makukonsider ba to na, uh, uh, ano tawag dyan, successful, na-launch naman, kaya lang, uh, if you will search more about this and read more about this, ano, this area bata, di ba? Paparang several days after the launch of this, ano, of this satellite, nawala na agad siya ng, ano, nawala na agad siya ng signal. So, and, um, it was only reported na around 1992 na yata, na, ano siya, uh, parang, it was reported na, na, um, this satellite re- in, re-entered the Earth's atmosphere around 1992 na. I forgot the, ano, the year, the, the date specific. Special na lang. O sa yun, parang around 1975 nga po siya, yun ano, uh, nilaunch. Tapos around 1992 siya na, ano, nakita ulit or nagkaroon ulit ng segment. So, that's why, uh, I don't know if you can consider that as a, an, as, a, as a successful, ano, launch. But again, the Indian Space Program received only financial support from the Soviet Union which helped the Indian Space Research Organization achieve aims such as establishing the Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station, launching the remote sensing satellite, develop India's first satellite known as the Aryabhata Ngapo, named after Aryabhata, we discussed it kanina, and sending astronauts into the space. Tapos yung nasa taas, uh, na image po, that's the root, ayan, the roots of nuclear power in India lie in the early acquisition of the nuclear reactor technology from a number of Western countries, specifically America, and uh, which uh, supported the Tara for Atomic Power Station and Canada's Candy Reactor. So, ayan, tapos ano, uh, aside from um, India, China also, uh, uh, has many, you know, has many uh, contributions in different fields of science and technology. China is one of the ancient civilizations with um, substantial contributions in many areas, uh, like in the field of medicine, astronomy, science. Same, naman with the uh, same with India. So, Chinese civilizations have greatly influenced many of its neighboring countries, like kasama na tayo. Well, the Philippines, Japan, Korea, and other and anti- other countries that ano that belong to the uh, Silk Road, yung tinatawag na Silk Road, the old Silk Road. Um, I'm sure you're ano naman you're familiar with that. Kasi I think sila alam naman ano, pa, pa, uh, common knowledge po yata yung Silk Road na yun, di ba? Yung, uh, the Silk Road that serves as the trading route of the ano of the well, trade routes, Eurasian trade routes between the East and the West, connecting the East and the West. And then, I included these four great inventions of the Chi- of the ancient uh, Chinese, and this includes the paper making, the uh, printing, the gunpowder, and the compound. So, the four great inventions um, of the ancient China includes uh, the paper making. So, naka- naka-indicate po that dito na ang inventor niyan is si Tai Lu. China was, uh, first, was the first nation who invented paper. The earliest form of paper first appeared in Western Han Dynasty. But the paper at that time you know, uh, was generally very thick, coarse, and uneven in texture. And it is made up of pounded and disintegrated hemp, hemp 
fibers. Pero uh, it was the earliest existing ancient paper na ginamit at nakita nila. Tapos it was Tai Lun um, in the Eastern Han Dynasty na siya pong uh, nakadiskubre or well actually nakadiskubre, nag-invent po siya ng isang klase ng papel na it's a mix na. It's a mix of the hemp fibers, rugs, fish meat, and other material, bark, yun, and other materials na sinasabi it was cheaper, it was light, it was thinner, it was durable, and more suitable for lighting. So, this art of paper making spread east to, east to Korea and Japan in the 7th century. And soon after, along with the Silk Road, um, the Arab countries also began to learn how to make paper and from Arab to Europe. So before paper was invented, the first emperor of China had to go over the 120 kilos of official documents written on bamboo or wooden strips or even buto or tortoise shell were all used as writing surfaces. So it was really a great change or impact nung nagkaroon po nung or na-discovery na, na itong ganitong klase ng papel by Kaimi. Tapos another um, great invention of the ancient China is the printing technique nila. The inventor na ka-indicate po dito was Li Sheng. So Chinese first invented a fixed type of uh, printing uh, machine, a fixed type engraved printing uh, machine around 680. But it was uh, time consuming to engrave not easy to store and not easy to revise error since naka po siya. So during the reign of Emperor Wenzong of the Northern Song uh, Dynasty, uh, it was Bi Sheng who invented a movable type of uh, printing machine. A movable, reusable type which could be used again and again for different uh, um, books. So at first, it wasn't a great impact in China, but today, this printing technique or print typesetting technique is regarded as a revolution in the industry and eventually it spread to other countries. Then another is uh, the gunpowder. So daw isa pa po sa mga great inventions daw po nung, ng ancient Chinese is yung gunpowder. Ayan, so may mga pangalan na ka-indicate dyan. Yung sila yung mga alchemist. Um, Alchemy is a photoscience of chemistry kasi una pong uh, na-invento no, itong gunpowder as um, parang in an attempt, in an attempt to make the elixir of light. Yun, so, um, to make the, parang to, gumagawa sila ng ano, nung mixture na eventually nga po ay tinawag ng gunpowder to make the ember, emperor immortal purpose nila. So, the gunpowder initially was a mix of sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. But eventually, ganun man yung, ano nila, yung unang purpose of of um, making this uh, gunpowder. But eventually, nakita rin nila that this uh, gunpowder is essential in, um, or can be used in, in military uh, affairs. So, in the 12th and, 16th, and 12th and 13th century, uh, it spread to Arab countries, Greece, and other European countries. Ayan o, so overview created by Taoist alchemists in a trial to find a potion to gain human immortality. Ayan, the mixing elemental sulfur, charcoal, and salt paper. Yun nga, so yun yung, yun yung, ano no, yun yung dahilan, ano, kumbaga, ah, kaya sinasabi na gunpowder was accidentally invented in an attempt to make nga po immortality or to make the elixir of life, to make their emperor immortal. And then, panghuli is yung compass. Yung picture na nakalagay dito, hindi po yan yung unang ano ha, hindi yan yung unang itsura ng compass. So, yung unang compass po was actually just, ano, uh, made of lodestone. Ano lang siya, parang, can search na lang, pero hindi, hindi ganyan yung itsura niya. Para siyang ano lang, plato na may spoon. Tapos it is made up of lodestone. Lodestone is a uh, uh, kind of stone with magnetic properties. Nandiyan yan. Uh, the Chinese by the Han Dynasty began using north-south oriental lodestone. Ayan po yung binabanggit ko. Ladle and pole 
shape compass. So, ganun yung itsura niya. So, um, ang purpose po is for divination and geomancy and not yet for navigation. So, yung unang purpose ng paggamit ng compass is yung ayan, for divination, hindi pong pag mag-ano, parang kung so yung pag magpapagawa ka ng bahay kung saan dapat naka naka ano, naka uh, nakaharap, parang gano'n. So, papagawa ka ng bahay, titingnan if yung bahay mo, ano, if the house was faced in perfect harmony with nature, parang gano'n. So, yun yung purpose uh, uh, nung, nung compass noon. But eventually, nakita na nga rin nila yung, ano, yung, yung usage ng compass for navigation, for navigating long distances. Tapos, um, ancient uh, Chinese also in the field of farming and agriculture uh, created and used this deep water drilling. The Chinese discovered and made extensive use of deep drilled groundwater for drinking. Uh, mapabasa daw po at makikita natin yan in one of the Chinese and philosophical texts, The Book of Changes, kung saan uh, in one of its, ano, uh, you know, but it contains an entry describing how the ancient Chinese maintained their wells and protected their sources of water. Dun po sa latter part nitong PPT na to, makikita niyo yung binabanggit ko dyan ng Book of Changes. One of the, in-include ko yata yun, uh, one of the um, um, philosophical uh, book, you know, of the ancient China. Tapos they also practice rice cultivation and wet field cultivation. Yeah. That was in the field of medicine, ancient uh, Chinese are known for this. I'm sure alam niyo na yan. They're known for this acupuncture. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Moxibustion, massage or tina massage and of course in Chinese herbs. So in the field of medicine, um, Chinese are known for this uh, Acupuncture, the traditional Chinese medicinal practice of inserting needles into specific points of our body for um, therapeutic purposes um, to alleviate pain you know, or to relieve pain or to, to help treat various health conditions. So, pangalawa is meron din silang ginagawang maxibastion. It's a traditional Chinese medicine technique which involves burning the mugwort. Mugwort is a small spongy herb used to facilitate pain. And so it can treat low for pains and ache and even recognize to relieve menstrual, menstrual cramps for women. So sinasabi that the purpose of moxibustion um, well, katulad na rin ng iba pang traditional Chinese medicine is to strengthen our blood to stimulate the flow of pain and to maintain general health. And then, they also practice massage. Uh, like for instance, itong pinatawag na pina massage. Um, and so, pina tui, which literally means pinch and pull, refers to a wide range of traditional Chinese medicine, therapeutic massage, and body work. So, pina massage, um, is believed to stimulate the flow of pain to promote balance and harmony within the body using many of the same principles of acupuncture. Um, pain and massage believe, well actually the, 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 the Chinese tradition of massage therapy was developed from the combined um, expertise and methods of doctors in traditional Chinese medicine. May mga practitioners then of martial arts uh, Buddhist and Taoist who viewed and who believe na touch is essential to uh, to their spiritual yoga training and laymen who offered massages for relaxation. Chinese massage methods originated from the principle na uh, diseases and illnesses arises due to imbalance or deficiencies in the energy in specific pathways or meridians of our body. So, and naniniwala sila na through massage, uh, like through to win a massage, um, energy will flow harmoniously through our body or through these pathways. Tapos yung uli is yung Chinese herbs. The aims of the Chinese herbal therapy are to... 
公开。So again, um, Chinese herbs, the aims of Chinese herbal therapy are to help regain balance in the body and to strengthen the body's resistance to diseases. So Chinese herbs may be used to decrease uh, cold or flu symptoms, improve your breathing, or respiration, decrease pain, etc. So herbs commonly used are ginger biloba, yeast, chai, ginger, and cinnamon. Then in, in architecture, meron ako nilagay dito yung dry docks, you know, and mga bridges. Um, dry docks, the use of dry docks in China goes at least as far as back, as far back the 10th century. In his book, Dreamful Essays, the Song Dynasty polymath Shen Fu wrote of dry docks for repairing sheep. Um, basically, these are used for the construction, maintenance, and repair of sheep, boats, and other waterfalls. Tapos, ancient China is also used for, is also known for building um, bridges. Bridges were generally used to cross over large land or other huge masses of water or to connect uh, two points, two far points. And it was scattered throughout China. Uh, it was scattered throughout China's countryside from this, ano, itong mga arc bridges, stone arc bridges na to hanggang suspension bridges, hanggang pontoon bridges, and, and of course, um, ancient China is known for this Great Wall. Okay, alam niyo na yan? So Great Wall was, was built to prevent the invasion and also to protect the silk throat. Okay, since nga, uh, binanggit ko na kanina na yung silk uh, was very important during their time because um, yun yung naging sentro, kumbaga, no, ng uh, transport and at the same time transmission of information uh, ng, ng east and west. So, yeah, so Great Wall was, ano, um, built as, as to, to protect China's economic development and cultural progress. Uh, safeguarding trading routes and trading routes, yung sinasabi kong uh, Silk Road, and securing the transmission of information and transportation in China. And science is monitor. Ayan. So, um, ang, ang, ang ancient Chinese also uh, invented this uh, seismometer or ang tawag is, well, um, yung earthquake weather cock. Okay, earthquake weather cock. They invented this ano, earthquake weather cock or machine or seismometer ng pinatawa. They were able to design this. Uh, na, 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 uh, this this, ano, this seismometer uh, was used to uh, inform them when and where an earthquake would come. So gumamit sila nitong uh, machine na to kung saan it looks like a giant uh, six-foot bronze pot na mayroong mga dragon head kung, kung nakita niya yung itsura nung ano, nung, nung weather cock na yan or nung seismometer na yan yung nasa taas po those are dragon heads lining tapos yung sa baba ay mga frog tapos kung sa so yung sa ano sa bibig nung ano nung dragon head may mga ano yan parang may mga bola tapos kung saan bumagsak yung bola kung saan nakatapat o yun dun ibig sabihin dun daw yung epicenter so it was the first time that uh, mankind were able to detect an earthquake using this uh, machine designed by the ancient Chinese. Again, it was called as earthquake weather cap or yeah, simply the seismometer. Tapos, well, in the field of astronomy, Chinese were known for uh, making great observations about eclipses. And Chinese astronomers recorded around 1,600 observations of solar and lunar eclipses from 750 BC. Well, not only eclipses, and then Chinese developed these cosmological models. And pati mga supernovas, diba? sila rin po yan. Chinese din ang uh, known for uh, making observations about supernovas and comets. And then, 
timekeeping calendar. The traditional Chinese calendar is a lunisolar uh, calendar which records years, months, and days according to astronomical phenomena, phenomena on May 12, 2017, although China officially uses now the Gregorian calendar. Tapos, in literature and philosophy, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, class, ano, nabanggit ko na kanina, if you're still listening, uh, yung Book of Changes, or Classic of Changes. So, nandito yon sa four books and five classics na pinatawa. Four books are Chinese classic texts illustrating the four value and belief, uh, belief of uh, Confucian, Confucianism. Uh, the five classics and four books uh, collectively create the foundation of Confucianism. Sinasabi that these five, uh, four books and five classics were the basis for the civil exam or civil examination in Imperial China. So, view four books includes The Great Learning, The Doctrine of the Mean, The Analects, and The Men and Ventures. The so great learning is basically a guide for moral self-cultivation. So according to this book, the key to moral uh, self-cultivation is learning or investigation of things na nakikita daw po natin. Tapos yung doctrine of the mean, basically it deals with how to maintain perfect balance and harmony in one's life. Um, the doctrine of the mean focuses on following the way and acting in accordance with what is right and natural. Okay. Tapos yung analex, um, well, analex is basically a collection of Confucius uh, teachings and discussions with his disciples. Tapos yung Menchus, Menchus is a collection of conversations of Menchus with Confucius. So if, if you want, if you're interested and if you want to read more about this, you know, this um, books, you can search na lang po. Pero binabanggit ko na ngayon kung ano yung mga content po nila, okay? Tapos yung five classics naman, this includes the classic of poetry or book of poetry or book of songs, tinatawag din in some, uh, in some references. Tapos uh, uh, another is the book of documents. And Book of Documents, which is uh, basically a compilation of all the events in the ancient China. Tapos, a Book of Rights uh, describes social norms, uh, governmental organization. Ayan, mga yun. Tapos, Book of Changes, ayun, yung binanggit ko kanina, the Book of Changes, which is, or Classic of Changes, which contains a system of divination. And uh, which is centered largely around the principles of yin and yang. Um, and then, panghuli, meron din pinatawag na spring and autumn ano, which is a historical chronicle of the state of Lu. Lu is a basal state during the Anzon dynasty of the ancient China. Yeah. So again, the four books and the five classics serves as um, basis for the civil examination in the ancient China, in the imperial China, and can be considered as the Confucian canon in a few four books and five classes. Okay. So, again, ito lang po yung ano, no? ito lang po yung inilagay ko dito sa, sa presentations na ito. Um, Science and Technology in Asia ano, um, includes um, civilizations in this middle, middle East civilizations and um, great contributions of the ancient India and ancient China. Tapos yung panghuli po ay yan, yung panghuli naman is um, Africa, well specifically the ancient Egyptians. Konti lang po yun, ano, na inilagay ko doon. So later, if you want to add more uh, about this, um, the historical development of science and technology in these countries or continents, you can add naman. And so, ito yung ginawa kong presentation for, ano, for Africa. So, development of science and technology in Africa. So, Africa 
is blessed with natural resources and uh, minerals. Science also emerged in, uh, in Africa before the Europeans colonized it. And Africa has seen the rise and fall of many great civilizations and empires throughout its, its, throughout its history. And the oldest and the longest uh, among these uh, great civilizations is the ancient Egyptians, who are uh, still up to now one of famous for their pyramids, for their pharaohs and all. So ancient Egypt is one of the greatest and most powerful civilizations in the history of the earth or history of the world. It lasted around uh, well over 3,000 years from 31 or from 3,150 BC to 30. That's why in this presentation, I own, I included some of the contributions of the ancient uh, um, Egyptians. Okay? Like in the field of science and medicine, meron silang mga pinatawag na Imhotep. Ayan, so ancient Egyptian doctors, yung pinatawag na mga Imhotep. Priests were the first people to practice medicine, although meron din mga scribes na pinatawag. Uh, scribes also practice medicine, uh, which proved beneficial for documenting procedures and treatments. Because scribes during the ancient Egyptians were the people na educated. They were people educated to uh, write. Yeah. So, kasi hindi lahat ano. So, uh, yung mga yon, they were uh, they were known as scribes. And aside from the priests, scribes also practice medicine. The sessions studied at schools that were called the House of Life, and the first known uh, doctors or physician in Egypt was high priest known as Imhotep. So Imhotep Dopo is considered by many to be the true father of medicine. Um, um, Imhotep is believed to have diagnosed and treated many diseases, around 200, no, over 200 diseases. Diseases of the abdomen, the eyes, the rectum, the bladder, and other parts of the body. He is also known to uh, have practiced some uh, surgery as well as dentistry. So uh, around 525 AD, um, Imhotep was elevated to full god status, and uh, he was considered as the only regular person ever to reach the possession of God in ancient Egypt. Tapos, yung mga kasunod, these are some examples of um, papyrus, ancient uh, Egypt, uh, Egyptian papyrus. Uh, and the, itong uh, una, the medical papyrus, the Edwin Smith papyrus. Papyrus, um, it's a medical text on surgical trauma dating back to 1600 BC. The papyrus documents 48 cases including uh, injuries to the head, neck, arms, and torso, along with, uh, along with the treatment fees. Um, the Edwin Smith papyrus uh, also um, explains or details the diagnosis and prognosis of um, those illnesses or diseases. Tapos, aside from Edwin Smith, meron din tinatawag na Ebers uh, papyrus. Purchased by George Evers in 1873, dating back 1500 BC, it's a papyrus scroll that contains over 700 magical spells and remedies. Um, it also contains um, incantations intended to ward off demons that cause diseases. So this papyrus, the Evers papyrus, includes treatise on the heart, which documents the heart as the focal point of our body, the heart being the focal point of blood supply. So, tama naman, diba? The heart being the focal point of our blood supply with all the blood vessels attached to it. So, it illustrates the Egyptians' knowledge of the heart as the centers of the body's blood supply. But at the same time, it also contains incantations na po for getting rid of all the humans. So, parang it's a mix of ano, no? Um, like, kaya nga may mga magical spell eh, na kasama itong Everest Avenues. So, it covers um, medical subjects uh, like asthma, bone setting, death, dentistry, burns, and other. 
Tapos, another medical text is yung kahon, gy kahon gy gynecological papyrus, which contains 34 sections that deal with specific gynecological problems, diagnosis, and treatment. This text informs that the ancient Egyptians believed that many of the maladies they suffered from occurred as a result of different conditions of the womb. So they believe that the eyes and the womb are for some reason uh, are closely linked in ancient Egyptian health uh, and medicine. So, um, but the Cajon Gaitanological Papyrus, all the treatments included uh, and explained in this uh, papyrus are non-surgical. So treatments generally include um, massage, fumigation, and application of um, ano, application of um, scented oils. Yeah. So in mathemat in the field of mathematics, naman, I decided to include the uh, lepombo and ishango bone. Kasi ito yung ginamit ng ancient Egyptian for measuring. So the Libombo bone is considered as the oldest mathematical instrument of the ancient Egyptian. Um, a baboon fib uh, fibula is used as a measuring device and named for its location of discovery in the Libombo mountains of Swaziland. It was believed that this device is at least 30, uh, 35,000 years old. And judging from its uh, distinct markings, it could have been used to either, well, uh, sa ibang references na indicate mismo na it's around 29 distinct markings daw po yung makikita doon sa Lipombo bone. So judging from its 29 distinct mar markings, it could have been used to either track the menstrual cycle of women or the lunar cycles. Or sometimes, you know, it is also used merely as a measuring tape. Now, Ishango bone is another uh, is another device used by the ancient Egyptians. Well, not merely a measuring device or talisman, but um, yeah, the bone's inscriptions are clearly separated into clusters of markings that 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 represents various quantities. When the markings are counted, they are they are all odd numbers with the left column containing all prime numbers between 10 and 20 and the right column containing added and subtracted numbers. So when both columns are calculated, they add up to 60, which is nearly double the length of the lunar cycle or the menstrual cycle of the moon. So pwede siyang gamitin for those purposes. And then... Uh, some of the mathematical papyrus, kung kanina uh, nag-include ako ng ilang medical papyrus you know, uh, used by the ancient Egyptians, the Ebers, the, the, uh, and the uh, uh, Edwin Smith papyrus. For mathematical papyrus naman, I included Rhind and Moscow mathematical papyrus. So Rhind mathematical papyrus is one of the best known uh, papyrus purchased and named after Alexander Rhind in 1858. And it consists a long table of fractional parts to help with addition, followed by the solutions of 84 specific problems in arithmetic and geometry. Um, tapos yung isa, yung Moscow Mathematical Papyrus, um, is well known for its geometric problems demand. Um, these problems reflect well with the functions the scribes would perform during their time, like to, uh, yeah, how to distribute or how to measure the areas of fields uh, as well as the volumes of the pyramids and other solids during the, during the ancient history. In the field of astronomy, gumamit sila ng mga calendar, the ancient Egyptians used a lunar, well initially, lunar calendar lang yan, tapos eventually nagkaroon na rin sila or gumamit na rin sila ng solar calendar. Um, generally speaking, when we say Africans, they use three types of calendar, the lunar, the solar, and the stellar, or a combination of the two. But specifically, the Egyptians so for used, or the ancient Egyptians used lunar calendars, and then eventually Napo, they used the solar calendar. So the, the ancient Egyptians used a lunar calendar to mark the religious festivals and rituals, and um, they also use a solar calendar for their daily 
uh, for their daily lives, which contains the 365 days per year. Each year was comprised of three four-month seasons, which were named after the significant events related to their agrarian lifestyle. So yung una is yung aket, the time of blood, carrot, the time of growth, and shemu, or the time of harvest. So the Egyptian calendar was broken down from one week, one week was 10 days, three weeks was one month, four months was one season, and three seasons and five holy days was one year. Yung five holy days na yun uh, um, was treated or were treated as out of the year in honor of the Egyptian gods. Um, ancient Egyptians are known for obelisks. Diba? I'm sure ala, ano yun, alam niyo yan, obelisk and sundial. So obelisks were used um, at entrances to temples of the sun god and uh, were covered in an alloy called electrum which is comprised of four parts uh, gold to one part silver. Obelisks were symbolic of the pharaoh's divinity as well as objects of worship of the Egyptian sun god Ra. The, the hieroglyphic in, uh, in, in, inscriptions recorded the deeds and accomplishments of the pharaoh. pharaoh. So, aside from obelisks, ancient Egyptians are also known in using sundials. Sundials is the earliest type of time-keeping device which indicates the time of the day by the position of the shadow of some object exposed to the sun's rays. As the day progresses, the sun moves across the sky, causing the shadow of the object to move and indicating the passage of time. And the pause, um, writing system, um, ancient Egyptians, you know, um, has this hieroglyphics, the Tinatawa, the earliest form of writing, um, was hieroglyphics, which, uh, were simple, oh yeah, were drawings that portrayed a story. The Egyptians used them to keep accurate uh, records and maintain control of their empire. Scholars have discovered three uh, different classes of Egyptian hieroglyphics. This includes the phonograms, which are signs that represent specific sounds, ideograms, which represents ideas instead of uh, sounds, and determinatives, which are hieroglyphs that were not spoken or Tapos, uh, I also included this one, cosmetic makeup. Kasi parang, di ba, um, ancient Egyptians, makikita mo sa mga movies or sa ano na, may mga, may mga makeup sila, no? whether men or women. And uh, ancient Egyptians of both genders, again, whether men or women, routinely uh, wore makeup and other cosmetic aids not only to enhance their physical appearance, but also for one's health. So, and makeup originated with the ancient Egyptians where men and women alike are used to wear it. So, um, some of the common cosmetics in ancient Egypt includes malachite, or malachite is a copper ore which provided um, green eye makeup color to make the eyes appear larger. Tapos, coal used to draw thick um, distinctive black lines, yan, di ba, common yan pag it's a chance, yung maganon, giving an almond shape to the eyes. And red ochre, which was used uh, as a leaf color, and henna, which was used to stain the fingertips and toes. So, yun lang po yung in-include ko, no, with, ano, with, um, the, some of the contributions of the ancient Egyptians in different fields. Tapos, eto, uh, this is just an article. Meron ako nilagay dito na ano na ato. This is just this is just an article about uh, the Africa, Africa today. If you want to read ano about uh, how uh, yeah designing for Africa. Ano ba yung mga pwedeng going ano uh, innovations or technological innovations in Africa? So yun po. Um, Yun lang. Okay, so ito lang yung inilagay ko dito sa presentation na to. So again, um, yung, yung ano natin, yung topic natin is about cradles of early science. Kaya kung napansin niyo po yung discussions natin, ano, ay tungkol sa 
um, historical development of science as well as technology for well, different fields of sciences you know uh, in mula po dun sa four uh, ancient uh, Mesoamerican civilizations hanggang sa mga Middle Eastern uh, the civilizations hanggang dito sa ancient India and China and up to ancient Egyptians okay so basically yun lang po yung content ng ano natin ng uh, exam natin hindi na ako mag hindi na ako nag well hindi na ako nag magbibigay pa ng another uh, quiz since you had one quiz naman na uh, okay na yun for the midterm period tapos si had some activities naman na uh, uh, for uh, dun sa un- unang tatlong topic natin hindi ka na yung dati dyan so uh, you will have na lang a major exam which is midterm and then after po ng midterm uh, some activities will be given when I say some around 2 to 3 activities also siguro for the final term siguro 1 or 2 quizzes and final exam so that will conclude na your SDS subject Okay? Nandiyan pa ba kayo? <laughs> Nakikinig pa ba? Yes po. Ayan. So, hopefully, ano, malinaw po sa atin kung ano yung mga dapat natin gawin, tapusin, aralin for the subject. Yun na lang naman. Uh, inuulit-ulit ko para po alam natin saan tayo papunta, no? ano pa yung mga dapat natin gawin para po sa subject natin. So, again, for the midterm, ang coverage lang po ng midterm, uh, um, tinatapos ko pa, no? Uh, Siyempre, may mga edit pa po ako, may mga binabago pa ako. So, um, the coverage of the midterm is whatever we discuss from the first, from the introduction down to this topic will be the coverage of the uh, midterm. So, there are some uh, that will actually, I'll be, I'll be, getting some questions, random questions coming from the first few topics that we discussed, ano hanggang dito po sa topic na ito. Well, the type of exam, maglalaro lang naman yan sa multiple choice, identification, mawawala yan, modify true or false, okay? Meron na akong ginawang ilang ilang, ano, ilang questions, um, ilang questions, uh, modify true or false, nag-include ako ng ganun sa exam natin, sa midterm natin. Okay? If you will ask me the total number of items, uh, hindi ko masabi kung ilan, pero malamang more than ano yun. Kasi for, for quiz, ang max ko is around 40. Eh. So, tingnan natin, malapaka 50 <laughs> for the midterm. Ayoko na rin masyadong mahaba kasi sabi ko nga, bandang huli ako rin mag-check ng lahat ng outfit natin. So, uh, Kaya, uh, o, tingnan natin. I cannot tell. Hindi ko pa masabi kung ilan yung number of items because hindi ko pa po tapos. So, um, tatapusin ko itong weekends na to para by next week, eh, ready na for the exam. Okay? So, um, yeah, yun lang. First one. Ma'am? Yes po. Ma'am, next week po na Miyerkules din po. Or parang sa quiz po na sa Sabado po. Ah, what you want? Pwede naman Wednesday, pwede naman Saturday. Kasi Sabado, ang Sabado po, natin, charot. Ah, yes po? Sabado po. Sabado. <laughs> <laughs> Alam mo problema? Kasi ang Wednesday natin is synchronous tayo lagi, di ba, pag Wednesday. Tapos Saturday is asynchronous dapat yan. So no no online, tapos posting, and kung ano man. O sige, if you want... Uh, if you want it na Saturday yung posting, wala namang problema. Total posting lang naman ng exam yun. So, uh, pag-uusapan na lang natin kung anong oras po yung posting. Okay? Same with the quiz, di ba? Kung 4.30 ba yan or kung alas 6 ba. No? So, or kung gusto nyo mas maaga by Saturday, okay lang naman. So, if you want it by Saturday and not on Wednesday, okay lang din naman. So, Okay ba sa atin? Uh, si Lito nagre-request noon Saturday. Okay ba sa atin yun? Lahat? <laughs> Wala na si Aklito. Mukhang okay sa kanila ng ano. Ng uh, mas maaga, Wednesday. 
wala rin nag-react. Mukha ayaw nila mag-exam. <laughs> so, anyway, kung mag- tong magkataon pala, edi, uh, ah, okay lang po, sabi ni Mark. Ayun. So, anyway, ayun po, sige, uh, para mas mabigyan po tayo ng mas makabang oras, ano, para po, since kakatapos lang din naman natin today, so, mas mahabang oras para magbasa at mag-aral. So, sige po, by Saturday. Total, basta next week naman talaga yung schedule ko for the midterm para sa FDS. So, uh, pasok pa rin naman yung Saturday by next week. So, sige. So, 3332, uh, posting of your midterm will be on Saturday. Yung time, pwede na bang pag-usap, or pwede na bang sabihin ngayon, or i-message na lang ako kung Ano po yung mapag-usapan, both classes, 3, 3, and 3, 2, na oras pa ng posting at kaya on Saturday. Okay po ba yun? Oh, I'm assuming okay po yun. Okay? So, okay lang sa akin na mas maaga. Total, sabi ko, posting lang yun. Uh, pwede rin naman na we'll wait until 4.30 or uh, ano, kung ano oras po tayo nagkaklan. So, 4.30, kung... Uh, uh, 6 o'clock pa yan, no? So, basta on Saturday. Okay? Sige. Ma'am? Yes po. Ma'am, kapag po ba mas maaga na i-post yung exam, we can accomplish it within the day po? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yung exam po natin, ang um, pag-major exam, actually, hindi lang trito for SPS, ano, sa lahat naman ng, ano, sa lahat naman ng kasi na hinahawakan ko, not only for SPS subjects, and actually not only for this semester, kahit ang mga, ano pa, nakaraan pa, na, ano, uh, hindi po talaga ako nagbibigay ng the whole day, kasi tinitingnan ko naman kung kung kaya naman tapusin na, na ang ano, no. So, if it is, um, sabi ko nga, baka 50 items lang, matagdagan lang yung max ko ng 40 pag So, uh, baka, ano, kung halimbawa 50, items, 50 points lang yan, kasi sinasabi ko may modified na ako, eh, modified true or false, eh. So, usually, kapag modify true or false, nagbibigay ako ng 3 points for each item doon. O, eh, kung 10 points, or 30 points na yun. Diba? So, baka ganun. So, tingnan natin. Uh, usually, for major exam, mga 2, ano lang, for SPS, mga 2 hours lang ang binibigay ko for the exam. Okay? Kasi nga, when I say, when I say uh, major exam, ano, 30, ano, sinabi ko, 50 points or 60 points, Meaning, there are some questions there na equivalent na to 3 points or, or 5 points, depende. Okay? So, like yun, like yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. If it is a modified true or false na may, diba, usually ginagawa ko 3 points yan for each item. Kasi yung ginawa ko, ano siya, I don't know kung nagbigyan, ano ba yung quiz niyo? Nakalimutan ko na kung paano yung ginawa ko ng quiz. Pero, if it is modified true or false, yung ginawa ko ngayon, parang ano siya, if I, I put two statements, yung, alam, alam sure, alam nyo yun, yung klaseng, yung ganong klase ng modified or false, yung two statements, the first, if the first statement is true, you write A, if the first statement is, uh, if the second statement is true, you write B, if both are true, you write C, if none is true, you write D, tapos you have to justify. Nabawa, if the answer is D, meaning both of the statements are false, you have to look for the incorrect term, replace it with the correct word, so, ganun. Tapos, Kapag tama lahat, edit 3 points yun. Kapag mali naman yung left ang inilagay mo, automatic 0 yun. Kasi the basis, if you will get uh, the scoring, if you will get 3 points or not, it will be the letter na ilalagay mo. Yun. So kung sa letter pa lang, mali na, edi 0 na agad yun. Pero kung sa letter tama, tapos, uh, yung letter tama, oh, that's 1 point or edi. Basta? Uh, well, explain ko na kasi later on, pag nag-check ako sabay-sabay po niyan, para alam niyo kung paano yung, i-send ko naman sa inyo yan yung, ano, yung Tito Correction, para alam niyo lang kung paano yung magiging scoring ko. So, pag modified to or false, na ginawa kong ganun, 3 points each item, ganun yung scoring na ginagawa ko. So, alam mo, letter D yun, hindi nilagay mo, to sa A, tama yung ginawa mo, sa pinagkamali ka, 2 points yun. Okay? Or pag sa letter pa lang, mali na, zero na yun. So, ganun yung, yung score yung ginagawa ko. Okay? So, anyway, isa lang po yun, modify to or false. I will include also, uh, ma'am, baka pwede po kayo maglagay ng example. Ano exam? Ah, <laughs> lalagyan ko pa ng example. E, then, i-explain ko na nga sa inyo. Halimbawa, 
ay pwede natin example. Basta, ano, ang <laughs> yung uh, di ba, pag tingin mo two statements, pag tingin mo ang taang A ay tama, o di A ang isagot mo, kasi tingin mo A lang yung tama mali yung B. Pag tingin mo naman yung B ay tama, at tingin yun lang yung tama, eh di B ilalagay mo kasi tingin mo mali yung A. Pag tingin mo parang sa mo sila tama, eh si. Pag tingin mo parang silang mali, o di. Kung parang silang, uh, no, A lang yung tama, tingin mo ah, di B mali, eh di hanapin yung, yung mali doon sa B. Tapos, ang scoring mo doon, ba? Ang nilagay mo, A. Kasi B nga yung mali. Tapos, uh, tapos pinalitan mo. Hinanap mo yung mali, pinalitan mo. 3 points yun. Eh, halimbawa, A nilagay mo. Tapos, nagkamali ka ng, ng, ano, ng palit. Eh, di automatic. 1 point lang yun for the correct letter. Uh, ang scoring kapag A or B ang sagot is 3 or three or 1 point lang. Wala pong 2 points sa kumbili doon. I guess, diba? <laughs> Wala akong 2 points na binibigyan. Nagbibigyan ako ng 2 points doon kapag letter D yung sagot tapos meron kang isang tama. Kasi diba, D parehas mali. Parehas, uh, the two statements are false. So, ayun. So, next ko ha, para uh, eventually sa checking, alam niyo po kung paano ako magbibigyan ng score. Kasi, um, means, well, madalas yun. Pag, ano, kapag ganyan yung ginagawa ko ay, ah, uh, parang feeling no ano parang ang baba naman ng score ko mga ganun kasi feeling nila tama tapos eventually pag binigay ko na yung tita correction or inexplain ko na yung scoring yun yung nagkakaroon ng ano so basta uh, eh uh, eh yun na yung nagawa ko hindi pa tapos class yung exam ha? pero ay ay included na ng ganong ano ganong questioning so ganong ano ganong uh, klase ng ng uh, exam so dadagdagan ko pa po yun pero ayun nga para alam nyo lang po okay Sige, yun lang. Uh, ano pa ba? May question pa? Ma um, Ma'am, yes. ma'am, question po. Nicole. Nicole. Uh, for correspondent uh, student po, baka pag natapos na po namin yung uh, module, uh, saan po naman siya pwede ay, isang saan? Ay, already? Ay, hindi pa naman po. Ina-ask ko ah, lang po if ready. ever matapos na po. Uh, ano, wala na po. Wala na talagang nangyari. Ano, no? Talagang send na lang po natin sa ano, sa email siguro. Pero pwede bang mm -hmm. ano, oo. Uh, para halimbawa treaty uh, lahat ng correspondence naka Google Drive lang siya para pag chinek ko di ba hindi ka nagpalat nagets mo ba yung parang kaso syempre merong magkukumpanya na isa di ba pwede pwede ba yun pwede naman po ma'am uh, uh, i-ask para... na lang din po yung uh, correspondence mm -hmm. para ano siya para hindi ka nagpalat kasi syempre ilan kayong klase ko tapos lahat may mga correspondence. So, para po, pag, oh, pag nakita ko yung drive na to, na 3-3, all the correspondence, these are the names, these are the words, pag open ko. Ayan, madali yung checking. Okay? Okay, okay po, man. Thank you po. Okay? Tapos, ano pa ba? Yun lang. Tapos, correspondence, ano, yun po, uh, you just have to take the midterm and the finals. That, uh, tapos, ang magiging basis ng, ng grades niyo po, ay yung ating activities, you no? Know, uh, ilang activities. Medyo madami-dami yung activities sa ano, sa SPS na module eh. So, sinipag si Ma'am Golia. So, medyo madami yung activities doon. You have to accomplish lang those activities, submit it, and then yung uh, two major exams natin, midterm and final. For the rest of you na online naman ko, uh, whatever activities lang that I posted sa classroom, yun lang po yung isa-submit natin. So, for the midterm, Tat tatlo ba? Tatlo lang. One. So, for the midterm period, ang grade po natin ay manggagaling attendance, since part na po siya. Pangalawa is um, the activities that, that are already posted, were already posted in the classroom. Tatlo lang nun. One quiz, one major exam, and nandigyan na ba ako ng report for midterm? Wala. Wala pa naman. Okay. So, yun lang po muna. For final term, baka magbigay ako ng, ano, ng report on group naman yun. Group uh, work or group report on those two remaining topics. Yung nanotech at saka global pandemic. Okay? So, yun lang. Okay? So, para alam niyo po ha, paano po natin kikwentahin yung grade nyo. Both for the midterm and for the final. Kasi ako nagbigay ng grade, midterm, tapos final term, tapos saka SISB. Okay? Ganun yung class record ko class. Okay? Ayun, question pa? No more? 
Ma'am, attendance po. Yes po, Flores. Ma po, ma'am. Flores, Flores. Wala, wala naman. Nagbura ko na. 3, 2? Opo, ma'am. Okay na. Arca and Gutierrez. Tes then, Kozai na correspondence lang ang absence sa tape. Ma'am? Yes po. Please. Clari clarify ko lang po if ano, this coming Saturday or next Saturday po yung midterm? No, next Saturday pa po. Next Saturday. Next Thank you. Po, oo, next week po yung ating uh, midterm, uh, midterm exam. Okay? So, kaya ang sabi ko, pasok pa naman by next week yung Sabado. Okay? So, Sabado po, next week. Okay? Okay po. Thank you. Okay. John, Aquino, ma'am, kumusta po ang naging wedding? Okay na po. <laughs> Nakaraos din. Okay? Uh, last May 21, yung wedding namin. So, okay na naman po. Masaya naman. Okay? Matapos din lahat ng pagod. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sabi ko nga eh, ah, uh, Medyo na-delay lang kaya ng kaunti doon sa ating midterm. Pero, uh, ayun, uh, lahat naman yun, tatapusin natin. Until when ba yung klase natin? Until, ano no, matatapos pa buong June, buong July pa ba? Ano, paalala nyo nga ulit sa akin? Press, press of 3332. Until when nga po sa calendar natin? Kasi, maaga matapos para po the remaining time eh para ano na at uh, uh, thousand checking na ng lahat ng output sabay-sabay para po um diretso record diretso pag natapos ko ganun kasi ako diretso record diretso ano na encode ng thing so sina-announce ko naman yun kapag mag-encode na or nakapag-encode na ako ng thing may nakapag-check ba? kailan nga until when? ang ano natin? July 30 po ang end ng end Okay, thank you, Christopher. Ayan, so, we still have two months pa para po tapusin yung ano natin. And, uh, yun nga, actually, ayokong until July 30, ayokong sagarin yan. So, tapat before July 30, at least one week or two weeks before that, natapos na tayo para the remaining time nga po ay para sa akin naman for the setting of all the outputs and reporting. Okay? Kasama na encoding, sana, magawa. Okay? So, Sana all kasal. Ayan. Sana all. Darating yung day dyan. Okay? Sige po. Okay. Picture taking na tayo. Kung wala na po tayong ano. Wala na pong pasyon.